It's my first time and just help me. I know you shouldn't eat it now. Okay, just I, I will buy them for you. Yeah. How are you, Himmy? I'm very you good, sir. Take a cup as part of the ceremony. I'm doing this. <laughs> So we're about to get started, but we just have a, a request. All the people who made those really beautiful signs that are over more towards Bay, we're wondering if you could come over to join us behind the microphone here, because we're going to take some photos. So if people who are going up the stairs now with the signs, if you could call, all come around to this end, please, and join us with your signs. We'd really appreciate that. The water yet. Wanda Whitebird is going to give us some instructions when she leads the ceremony about that. And 
If Michelle Propel is in the house, please come to the mic. In Vancouver, women have been marching for 23 years. We come to police headquarters because we understand that the police are complicit in the, in the violence. We do not expect the police to help us with this. We are actually here to say that your days are numbered. Canada's days are numbered. We are getting stronger every day. Look how many people are out here. We were 150 people when we started coming here. We are building new relationships and we are going to create a new way of governing this land according to Indigenous tra traditional protocol. So we've never been idle. We have resisted colonization and genocide. We've been in a long period of deep crisis, but we are healing and we are getting stronger. Since we came here last, we are so sad and heartbroken to say that three young, beautiful women have been killed since last February 14th, right here in the city of Toronto. Cheyenne Fox, <laughs> Tara Gardner, <laughs> Bella Labucan McLean. <laughs> your spirits live on. We know that you are with us today. And we are so sad for your family members. We know that their lives have been shattered forever. And we do what we can to support them and to hold them up. So we ask you all to join us in the ceremony now with Wanda Whitebird. We need Sema. Where are the tobacco ties? Can the volunteers can please bring the tobacco ties? Oh, so the people with the uh, Tara Gardner and uh, Lubicon signs, if you could bring those signs up. Alright, bonjour. My name is Dancing Star. My name is Dancing Star. I come from the Bear Clan. I'm a member of the Megamar First Nation and the territory I come from is a little place called the Button Brick, which is about 19 miles outside of Anna and Yoshi, Nova Scotia. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Although I live and work here now in the territories of the Mississaugas of New Credit, whose land we are on today. Yay! About nine years ago, we gathered as women in a, in a collective called No More Silence. And we wanted to do something that was meaningful and loving. And what we're going to do is a strawberry and a water ceremony. This is going to be ceremonial ground while we're here. And so we asked for kind words, lots of love and respect with each other. And that today we come to remember all of those women who have been murdered and missing, who have been violent, violent deaths. You know, all of those who've died from the results of colonization. And uh, we wanted it to be women, women-led, <laughs> and a support by our men behind us or with us. And today is Valentine's Day, it's a day of love. And so we appreciate all of the men who've come out to support us and stand behind us because we need you to hold us up when we can't stand up any longer. You know, so we didn't want to not include anyone, that's just where we're coming from for today. And so we appreciate that you respect that. And so we've handed out water and strawberries, and so we hopefully we got everybody. Um, and don't eat your strawberry. And don't drink your water. <laughs> so if you don't have a strawberry and you don't have some water, like, do this so we can make sure. Oh, but we need water and the strawberries. Do we have people warm them? Water and strawberries over there. I'm the water boy. I got one like that. Oh, water. We know that the strawberry ceremony is usually done in June. <laughs> and so it's not that we're early. It's not a way we're going to be celebrating with the strawberries and thanks to California or those warm places, we have some. Big, big berries, Jackie. 
Wow, it's so amazing that there's so, so many people here. So many beautiful faces I can see with love in their eyes, and that's that's welcoming from home, you know. So, are you guys ready to go? Yeah, we're here. Do we have the Tara Gardner sign? Do we have the Tara Gardner sign? Someone's asking. Who's oh? Can, can you please bring it bring it down here for us? Thank you. So we save the creator. We save my glitch for this day and for another breath of life. We save my glitch to the creator and for the people of this territory that allow us to be on their land. We ask that those women who have gone on to come and join us in this space. But we have not forgotten you. That we put one foot in front of the other because of you. But today is about remembering you that we're never going to forget. That we honor you in this in this sacred way. We ask you to fill our hearts, Creator, and ancestors to join us. And fill our hearts and minds with kindness, respect, love, and understanding. That within this space there will be all of those things. Kind words, respect. That I give you thanks for all of the people who have joined us today in this space. Do you want to start with an honor song? But I also brought my ego whistle today, which is a way that we bring in and ask our ancestors to come and join us. Also let us know that we're about to begin something really important. And it lets us know we're about to do something important. And everyone that is here is as important as the person who's next to you. We're on equal ground. begin by singing an honor song that Sue has brought to us about missing. Are you guys ready back there? I can't even hear you. So if anybody has brought drums or shakers, use them.
my gratitude to the singers and uh, uh oh, evil women singers, right? You got it? Okay. Well, we're all over the place. Last year we kind of forgot to mention the name and we're gonna make sure we mention it at the very beginning this time. People <laughs> live on Turtle Island in a peaceful and simple way. We know for a fact there were no judgments. But no. We had law, we had a society that was based on love. No judgments, just happiness and kind words. So today, we're going to create that world right here and right now. In your hearts, think of what it would be like to live in a world that hasn't been colonized, where we can be who we want to be without any of those structures and colonization to lead that world. Today, there are no judgments. There's only love. Today, there is no color. There is no differences. We're all the same. So, there are differences in spirituality because we have different faith. But there is no difference in faith. It is all important to believe in who we are. That's what we're going to create right now here in this space. So feel your heart and understand that that's where we are. The time before any of those things have impacted upon all of us. That we live in peace and harmony and in creation. Today, we want to bless this water because without water, we have nothing. We know that the Creator created Mother Earth with everything that she needed and that He created us. So she can live without us, but we cannot live without her. And so we give that thanks. We also know that we sit within this water for nine months before we're born. And there's only one way to this earth world, and that's through womb of women. Today we celebrate that and respect them. And so all of you have the water. And so Michelle, you have water, son. Can we do that for you? You got it? Well, only 17 versions. Well, yeah, there are 1,700 different versions of that song. But we're going to go with the one that Michelle has. <laughs> and, and accept all others, if you know one, sing it along as well. Drum, shake, you know, uh, whatever it is you need to do to know that, let us know you're here. We're going to turn towards that east direction. You know, and so we have a lot of Indians over there. East. Which way is that? It's in the
six directions, there is also a seventh. That seventh direction is within. And so now we're going to drink this water and put that good spirit within us. So, I'm out. about love and courage because it carries its little ones on the outside. It also teaches us about when a strawberry plant grows one here and one over there. Underneath our mother the earth, the roots will intertwine, they will find each other. And so it represents that connectedness that we have as human beings. It's that sweetness of the berries that we, we crave when we're sad or lonely. Now it is the berries that women fast from when they first come on their moon time to remind us of how important those nutrients are that we have from Mother Earth. And in that year of fasting from the berries, those young women learn from their aunties and their grandmothers about the medicines of this earth and the importance of taking care of who we are. Now, in this day and age, we talk about HIV, sex, all of those things that young women need to know about respect and what not to take from their partners. And so today, we give thanks for the strawberry and the teachings that she provides us. That we remember those who are not here today, wanted to be here, or home sick, or unable to come that we eat this for them as well. And for all of our people who are lost out there, that come on home and be with us because there is no condition to love. It's unconditional. So, we don't have to go with Okay. We're still working on a strawberry song, folks. It's been years. <laughs> So you need to eat the green part too. So it's really good to eat the green part first because then you have berry with it. the relatives, and all of us who are missing our women. When one woman dies, it's seven generations that die with her. The woman's warrior songs or what?
Would you want to speak yourself? Yes. yes. Thanks for that song and that honoring of the families. And today we have a family member who's going to speak for her very first time. A really good friend of mine who I've known for 22 years, who I love dearly and respect. She's going to talk about her daughter and her journey. So where are you, Joyce Carpenter? Come on over. Feel the love. Remember, we're here with love in our hearts, and that's here to support her and know she's not alone and that we love her. And we love the things that are just... You're going to speak here or with the mic, my friend? You want to speak here? You ready? Okay, let's hear it for Joyce. Let's know that we, we love her and that we support her. It's okay if you call my friend here as a gift. It's all right, we're here. Uh, hi, I'm glad to be here today. Um, I had the trauma star come and visit me about my late daughter. She went out on the 24th of September 1992 and they found her body the next morning stuffed in a construction hole. Um, I was told by the coroner and the inquest report, if you saw yesterday's newspaper, had the Metro Police done a more thorough investigation, this would have been a homicide. It would have been a homicide. But they just basically wrote her off. You know what I mean? They They wrote her off like, you know, so she, they said she lived on the streets, which she didn't. She had just given birth to a beautiful little boy who was now 22 and was only with his mother for six six weeks. I think I lost most of it. And when these three girls went missing last year, I said to myself, i got to speak up and say something because this is totally uncalled for, shouldn't be happening. <laughs> We should know where our girls are, we should back our girls, speak for them because they can't speak for themselves now. Um, I have to, I can't stick around because I've been, been invited up to Aurelia to their missing and murdered women's rally tonight and I have to speak up there at 6 o'clock. This has taken me 22 years to say something about my baby girl. She was my only daughter. I have five boys. So she left behind her dad, myself, and her brothers, and I have since adopted another baby boy who's going to be eight. So I miss her, I love her, and I'm just, I've been on this journey for 22 years, and what made me do this was the journey of the families of the three people that went missing last year. They're just starting this journey, and I've been on it for 22 years, and it's not nice. Okay, thanks. And how difficult it is on that 22 year journey of raising your grandson and your other adopted son. Yeah, well let's give it, show her how much we love her. <laughs> I applaud your courage. I really do. You know, and uh, that's why we're here for moms like you. Thank you. And so our next speaker is someone else I've known for a really long time. And a really special woman. Um, we seem to cross paths every couple of years and renew our friendship and catch up with each other. How would that be there, Brandy? And so Brandy's going to speak for us? Well, she's going to speak for her, to us. <laughs> right, my friend? Yes. All righty. Proud of you, too. Thank you, Wanda. Thank you, Wanda. 
Hello everybody, I'm Brandy for you. So for those of you who don't know me, and I'm here to represent Maggie's. Um, it's a drop-in center downtown Toronto. And um, it's a nice place to go. Um, it's for working girls and, um, well, anyone, I guess, really. But if you are in that line of work, that's who we are there for, mostly. Um, my friend Jean, Jean McDonald, is the director. This lovely lady right here. Oh, not to finger you out or anything. Um, put her under pressure. <laughs> Jean. Um, but anyways... Um, more to the focus, let me focus on more of the reason why we're all here. We all know why we're here, and we're here for a wonderful reason. And um, I feel for the families, for all those who still suffer daily, because you know what? Somebody's missing a daughter, a sister, a niece, an aunt, um, a mother, and we're all affected by this. Um, women are supposed to be honored traditionally um, in any in any culture, in any nationality. So we have to give thanks. We have to give thanks to the mothers who bring us down this road, down this journey. And unfortunately, for a lot of women, we meet up with bad fate. Mm -hmm. And so when that happens, we're all affected. Like I, I heard someone say that we lose seven generations. I think we lose probably a lot more than that. And it's not fair. And the perpetrators who are out there preying on these women should be, there should be justice served for every family that suffers. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes. It's, it's, I'm not looking for brownie points here. I'm, I'm stating a fact. Justice. Yes, we need justice. And we need the police to do their jobs. Yes. Okay, it's nice to have a nice job, a nice cushy job where you just push a pen all day. But you know what? The real job of a policeman is getting out there, getting into the communities, doing something about not only our indigenous women, all women, all races, all creeds. So I'd like to take this time out to, I brought a flower for all the families and all the ladies who have been murdered and taken from us before their time. So it's a white flower. So I'm leaving it here for them because I know they're here. So ladies, this is for you. Thank you very much, everyone. I hope you enjoy our day. Awesome. Power to the women. You can just put it right over there on the stand there. Um, can we ask the people at the top to come down? We have someone who's willing to sign for those who can't hear us. And so she needs to stand up. Right, Blue? And uh, we didn't really know what was going to happen. We didn't really know. We just knew that we were going to be here in this space and, and say prayers. So we're very honored that so many people have come out. Come out. And, uh, Media. Spread the word of love. So we have one more speaker. Ceremony. That's what I and that's Blue. And she's someone else I've known for a really long time. This is the, this day is about really good friends. <laughs> so Blue. Tanse, skinny kumun, nutisi na kasun, maying gendo dam, big river Saskatchewan. A couple of years ago, I came out to this um, this gathering, and I had been here before that, and uh, I didn't have my voice. So I think it was about two years ago now that I, I finally found my voice. Um, I too have been uh, directly affected by violence against women. My uh, cookum was murdered in 1977. So it took me almost uh, 34 years to find my voice. So first of all, I want to thank all those people who have come out and are finding their voice and are speaking out. It takes a lot of courage. So thank you. There is no time limit on when we find our voice. So all I can say is that uh, encourage all the women to do find your voice because it is with numbers that we are heard. 
When we speak as one, no one hears us. When we speak as many, we get heard. So speak out. Unlike some of the women here, uh, my grandmother's murder was solved. The uh, perpetrator got 15 years by pleading out. Not enough. He served 10 years in penetanguishing. Not enough. And uh, this this person not only took the life of my Coco, my grandmother. He took some of the life out of each and every one of her family members. He took some of the life out of the whole community which she grew up in. And all those people that she had met during her, her walk here on Mother Earth. So when someone takes the life of one, it's not just one, it's many. That's it's right. every one of us. Yes. Yes. And by speaking collectively, we can be heard. It's not easy. It takes a lot of healing. It takes a lot of ceremony. It takes a lot of community. But we can do it. And we have to keep working at it. The volunteers that came here today, we don't just, you know, not acknowledge them because it takes everybody. So thank you to the volunteers who've come out today as well. Thank you to those that have served us that water that changed into medicine. Those berries that became medicine. And to those people who have smudge uh, out here. Because smudge is a medicine for us. It helps us heal. So it's not only one thing that can change the outcome of all this violence and these atrocities which happen to all the women in our communities. It's many factors. So we have to use as many tools as we have to fight against it. For me, the hardest part was the voice, finding the voice. So encourage each other. You know, speak to each other, help each other, help hold each other up. And to the men in our community, we ask you to help us. We're tired. We've been doing this for many years. you to stand beside us, to support us, to be there for us. We don't want to take anything away from the men because we are a community and the community involves everybody. So we do need you to play this important part, this important role, which is to support us. So thank you very much for coming out. It's very cold. Um, but if we don't come out, nothing will be done. We don't want anyone forgotten because that's not how we live our lives. We include everyone. What am I pushing? Everyone is welcome to come out to this event. She said, what is she pushing? So let us all keep gathering and bring healing to our communities so we can find ourselves and we can put a stop to this. Hi, hi. <laughs>